Hey everyone, welcome back to the graph series. In this session, we are going to code and discuss the problem of visiting or getting all path between two vertices of a given graph. We have already discussed the basic approach using the depth first search in the previous lectures. If you have not yet visited the previous two lectures where we discussed the approach for this problem and one more problem that is has path, I would highly recommend you to go and discuss and let's say view that first because we are going to use some prerequisites from uh, those part of the videos. Okay, so uh, this problem is uh, coming from lead code. The problem code is 797leadcode.com, all paths from source to target. It's a medium level problem according to lead code, but we will solve it just like how we solve the easy problem. It's an easy problem. Uh, don't just care about the tags. It's like just to distract, I, I must say. So given a directed acyclic graph, right? So this time we are going to implement a DFS on a directed graph. So you will get a notion of how exactly directed graph uh, can also handle DFS. It's kind of like same. Uh, it's an acyclic graph. Uh, that makes sense because in the directed graph, uh, otherwise we have to maintain few things. Uh, of n nodes labeled from 0 to n minus 1, find all possible paths from 0 to n minus 1 and return them in any possible order. Whatever order you feel like, you just need to return all the orders, the uh, like all the paths, the order doesn't matter. The given graph is represented as uh, graph at i is the list of all nodes you can visit. So we have been given an adjacency list. This time we don't need to make a graph on our own. Okay, so this is the graph. So here you can see there are two paths from 0 to 3 because we have to get a path from 0 to n minus 1. So 0, 1, 3 and 0, 2, 3. So here you can see there's a list that has been returned. Similar to this, uh, there can be more lists that you need to return. If you look at the constraints, uh, then you can say that the edges can be at max, uh, so the vertices can be at max 15 and uh, rest of the constraints are also present there. If you want to look at what, where all it has been asked, so these are the companies, Bloomberg, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Apple, Adobe, Google, and yep. If you want to see related topics, then these are the related topics and tag that has been mentioned by eatco.com. So let's just copy uh, this part from here because I'll be coding it on Sublime and like di directly submitting it. So let me paste the snippet here. Right. Uh, okay. Cool. So first of all, I would like to discuss one thing with you. Now we need to return. So if you will look at the return value, it's a vector of vector. That is a 2D grid or an array list of an array list, like in whatever language you're working. We need to return something like that. Okay. So let's say we are going to maintain something called as a path. We are going to maintain a vector, something called as a path, and we are going to maintain something called as a result. Okay. Cool. Now, we, are, we have to start from zero because zero is the starting point. And this three, let's say this is three. Uh, one second. This is, um, I guess, two, I guess. Yeah. This is two and this is three, right? So you have to start from zero and end at three. Okay. So what you're going to do, you are going to apply DFS. So you're going to start from zero and then you will first go to one neighbor and resolve everything for that neighbor. Now, because zero is the starting point, what you're going to do, you are going to uh, first mark zero as visited, right? So let's say instead of marking it like this, we can also maintain a visited kind of an array and mark zero as visited, right? We'll mark zero as visited. And because zero has been included in the path, we are going to include zero in the path, right? So this path vector is going to have a zero. Now we go to one. Now we are at one, we'll mark one as visited. We'll add one in the path. And then we are going to go to the neighbors of one. We can, we have just one neighbor of one, that is three. Now we are at three, we are going to mark three as visited and we are going to mark three as the path. And here you can see we are at the destination and we have found one possible path. So what you are going to do, we are going to save a copy of this path inside this result. So we are going to save a copy here. That is zero, one, three. Okay. Now you can't go forward from anywhere from three and you don't even need to go because this is the destination. So now you will come back. Now, if you will come back, that means you have came back from a state. Now you are, you want to see if there are any other paths that are going from one that can also reach three. Let's say there is one more edge, uh, let's say with a vertex four, which also leads to three. So if you will just explore three and go back to zero, you won't be able to explore all the path from one because there is a path from one to three and there is a path from one to four to three that is also in the path of zero. So if you are going back to one, we want to revisit the rest of the states. Now, if you will carefully analyze, 
if now from 1 if you have already visited 3 if now from 1 you will try to go to 4 if you will try to go to 4 then you will mark 4 as visited and you will push 4 in the path and that's a blunder why the path is not 0 1 3 4 is it it's not 0 1 3 4 it is 0 1 4 that means if you are coming back from 3 you need to revert your state this if you have learned a bit of backtracking you might remember this reversion of states where you are going to revert back to the previous state because from the previous state there are some more possibilities that you want to explore you don't want to pollute the previous state due to the next state that has been visited so what you need to do when you come back from 3 you have to pop out 3 that is using the pop back operation and then you can uh, also remove it from the visited you can also remove it from the visited and then you can go to 4 you will mark 4 as visited and you will mark 4 in the path then from you have 4 you have only one uh, neighbor that is 3 you will mark 3 as visited and you'll add 3 in the path and here you have one more path you will add the copy 0 1 4 3 is a new path then you are going to go back from 3 to 4 so this is going to be removed this is going to be removed then 4 is not there is no uh, states left from 4 so you from 4 you will you can go back to 1 from one there is no states left so you can go back from one also it's all like the pop back or the remove last operation now you are at zero were there any states left from zero to be visited yes there were some neighbors because we are going to recursively call back so you are going to go from zero to two so you will mark two as visited you will push two then from two you are going to three so you will mark three because it is not yet visited and you will add three in the path and this is zero two and three and you have got all the paths and because we are storing a copy we need to maintain the path like this are you guys able to get this point right and this copy is stored in the result this path is always passed by reference in all of the calls because we are going to actually path pass the path so this is what you are going to do so if you will look at the uh, dfs function that i wrote i wrote that if you want to get all the paths from u to v just anyhow any cost give me all the paths from the neighbors to v and before going towards that path i will add the current u to all the paths and this is what we are doing right before going to the paths from 1 we are going to add one and then explore all the paths from 1 okay so let's just start the implementation of the problem okay so i'll write a function uh, let's say first of all let's make a global result vector okay i'll write a void function void all path right it is going to take our graph as the input it is going to take a start it is going to take an end it is going to take a vector uh one second end end and then it is going to take a vector of int and path right so it is going to also take a vector in the corresponding path because this vector is going to be maintained in order to like uh, add all the vertices to the path and then we can also add a vector of boolean and visited and this is the function that we are going to have okay so first of all before going to all the neighbors we are going to do path dot push back start right and we are also going to mark visited of start equals to true then we are going to go to all the neighbors so for auto and neighbors in graph of start because we have been already given a an adjacency list we can traverse it like this if not visited if the neighbor is not already visited what you are going to do you are going to go and explore the corresponding neighbor so how do you do that you are going to calculate all the paths in the given graph from the neighbor to the end with path from a visited and when you have explored all the paths from all the neighbors of this start you need to refresh your state how you will unvisit this start by making it false and you can also do path dot pop back
okay base case base case if start becomes equals to end then in that case uh, you will just do path dot push back end you need to uh, push the end then you can do result dot push back path and because you are using a push back function it is going to make a copy of the path vector right this is the path vector it is going to make a copy of the path vector if uh, just for the uh, i would say sake of uh, knowledge if you don't want to make uh, i would say a copy you can introduce an emplace back but that's not our use case our use case is to make a copy and store it in the result and make sure that this path vector is as it is passed by reference so you are going to do result dot pushback right and as soon as you have done result dot pushback you can do path dot pop back because now you want to revert the state and then you can do a return okay so from this you what you can do you can make a, i would say a vector of int path you can calculate n as graph dot size that is the number of vertices then you need to make a vector of bool visited of size n on false and then you are going to call all path for the given graph starting from 0 ending at n minus 1 with path and visited and then you are going to return the result because in the result you are having every information so i can copy this code from here right let's see let's run this on lead code and see if there is any error that we need to resolve let's just do a run code okay uh std okay okay i got it uh this is std vector of std vector of int okay copy paste okay this uh, sample test case is running fine if you submit it see the problem has been submitted okay cool this was the implementation this was the implementation of all path problem this was the implementation of all path problem from all path source to target right you can try this problem now the big question about this problem is what is the time complexity of this question right so let's just take the snippet uh, i would say let's just take the code snippet of this whole code and let's just visualize the time complexity of this code so now let's just see what is the time complexity of this code okay now you can see that you are calling all path from here once and then from every start to every end there can be multiple paths right now what can be the worst case in the worst case the graph can be a complete graph right if it's a complete graph then in that case this start and end is going to have a path of all the v vertices including start and end then exclusive of start and end there will be v minus 2 more vertices now all the arrangement of these two these v minus 2 vertices is going to be included in our path so let's say if uh, we have a graph like this one two three and four and let's say five six seven right if let's say something like this is there right okay so from one to four and this you can say that you uh, you will be having all the paths that are included and if it's a complete graph right then in that case there will be an edge from every node to every other node right every node to every other node right so in that case there can be v minus 2 vertices between the start and the end because if it is a connected complete as well as connected complete as well as a connected graph then that means that from start and end we are going to have uh, we are going to include everything 
And let's say if it is an undirected graph as well. Now we are talking about the worst case because you can see the implementation that we have done is like independent of the directions. So in that case, there can be something like this. So you are having uh, a path like this or uh, let's say a path like this, right? So this will be also a path. This will also be a path. This will also be a path. This will also be a path. So all the permutations you are going to take, right? So in that case, the time complexity is V minus two factorial or in big O term, it will be order of V factorial only, right? What is the space complexity? In the space complexity, you can see that we have taken a 2D vector, right? This 2D vector is going to have a, a, a order of V square space, right? This 2D vector is order of V square space. And because this is a recursive algorithm, it is going to take a call stack space also that will be added order of V space. And with this order of V space, this global space order of V square is constantly available. So order of V cube will be the space complexity. Again, let me tell you why by order of EQ, because we are going to have a call stack of recursion and what will be the peak of this call stack when we are going to have all the vertices inserted in the, at that point, we also have this resultant array, which is of order of V square. It's kind of a 2D array. So V space here. And at this moment we are having V, squ uh, v square space here. So total space is order of V cube, right? And the time is order of V factorial because we are going to have all the arrangements of all the vertices in between because we are going to go to all the possible permutations, right? So I hope uh, this problem and the implementation of the problem is clear to all of you guys. It's a very good implementation of, uh, I would say DFS. So definitely do give it a shot. Uh, and if you have any doubts, don't forget to drop those doubts in the comment section. And uh, if you like the video, then don't please forget to uh, like the video. It gives us a bit of motivation to make uh, more such videos. Uh, we are, uh, if you like found the content of uh, the, the whole channel useful enough, then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please hit that bell icon so that you can get a notification whenever we are going to put a new video on the channel. So on that note, uh, we will meet in the next part. Till then, take care guys. Bye-bye and love you all.